Thank you, everyone, for staying. Uh, I really appreciate it. My name is Rafael Martin. I'm the literary manager at Soho Rep. Um, and I'd like to present to you Daniel Aukin, the director, and Matt Fry, our lighting designer. <coughs> Actors are coming um, as we speak, so thank you. Um, I was thinking, since I knew I'd start with you guys, um, and this is a play that is quite superficial, on, you know, and superficial, and on, works on the outside in. I wanted to start with sort of the look of the thing. How did you guys come to this amazing sort of room that we're sitting in? Well, the person that's not here, who would be part of, who would inform this or not <laughs> is, uh, is the amazing set designer Eugene Lee who, uh, who designed the set and uh, I guess so the, a lot of it is I mean the, the banking, the two banks is definitely something that you uh, there's so, there are so many givens uh, with the text that actually um, it, uh, it works with such a tight palette, it's like written as a single scene really, more or less and it's clear that you want transitions to be, it seems self-evident to me reading it that you want transitions to be as invisible as possible. So those things already dictate a huge amount. And then a lot of it was just trying to make a space that uh, felt like it uh, acknowledged the room we were in. Um, and I guess that's, yeah. And this was like the second or third idea. We, ha we went through a few different things, which were uh, fussier, actually, I would say, and like involved more moving parts. And we just, we just, we just, as time went on, we just started to feel that less was more with this and wanting to make something that didn't get in the way of what these amazing actors were doing. Since it is a play that is so deliriously in love with acting and actors, and that is the... That is part of its great power that um, to just remove anything that took, could take attention away from that. Um, this is Lisa Joyce, everyone. Lighting, lighting, lighting. Thank you. So now that we know sort of how this sort of came to be, Matt, um, these lights are intense, and I'm sure they're a very specific choice. To, to, what what had you use these very industrial looking things? Well, I think uh, what Daniel was saying is that we tried a couple of things, and he said that they got very fussy. And I think what we ultimately arrived at is that um, we wanted to create just an installation of of a place in which everything could kind of happen because. You know, you, you read it, and I read it as a lighting designer, and I, I see, like, where things are supposed oh, to um, and, and you see the obvious places where things are supposed to happen, except that the joy of reading it is that it just sort of doesn't stop, and that the end of something is the beginning of something, and that's what's very exciting. Regardless, though, we kind of have to go into it thinking things might happen and things might change and whatnot. But I, I think it... You know, we came up with sort of an idea, and we just kind of added on to it, but it was really kind of the idea, I guess installation was really kind of the, the core of where it really was. And, and have you worked in that sort of installation fashion with other projects? Um, I guess I have, but I think they were more admittedly installations, whereas this was, I was doing a play. So it was a little bit more awkward uh, in, in, no, like in, in feeling confident about like, what we were supposed to I think, you know, I saw the run-through when they did it in the rehearsal hall, and I, I, I kind of thought, like, I don't think I really should be there. I think that actually as little as possible should happen. But, of course, we still didn't know for sure, but it wasn't until we got to tech, and we did, we did one day where we had a cue where something happened every scene, and then we did it again with no cues. And we both agreed that it was like, well, there should be no cues. Because the, the beauty of the language and what the actors are doing is... You know, to sort of impose on that, like, oh, the scene's changing is so, um, uh, such a shame, really, to, and, and, and because it's all happening so beautifully and effortlessly without anything happening at all. So it became um, uh, it's working against your instincts, I guess, is a lot of what happened. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's so maze-like, the language, and, and I think of it like Russian doll, nesting dolls. You know, it just goes into itself and into itself. Um, 
which I would expect as actors must be a sort of unique challenge. You know, there's this satellite in the middle and then these three sort of maniacs swooping around. I'm curious, <laughs> three maniacs. Three feeling, six feeling, seven actually. Yeah. <laughs> Feeling, feeling <laughs> humans. Um, and how did you, how, so maybe talk us through about how you found those feeling humans, you know, the w one to the other. How did, how did you create those particular Carlman, Carlman, Fanny Fanny? Um, I, I don't, I just, I was filled with rage. Um, <laughs> And I just, I, I kind of uh, tried to boil it down to very kind of base desires. And it's like one, you know, one person wants, is kind of like this Iago that wants to unseat his, his superior. And then the other one is infatuated with this man and his perfect face and just desires him and wants to be loved. Um, but I, 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 honestly, I can't think about the language or if I get, I get too technical. So it's, it was just more about like what those two people wanted. Um, Fanny Lips are like the most referenced, one of the most referenced pieces <laughs> of this. How did you uh, come to that amazing choice? Um, I, I, I had like different ideas. I was like stuck on her age for a while and then I was like, well actually the more interesting thing is, is the fact that she's been like totally has had all the surgery done. And then I looked online at like this website about the Desperate Housewives and there was this grid of all their faces and they all look the same. And they all have like this surprise look and then these crazy lips. And so then I just kind of started making that face. And then, and then this like voice came from the face and, and they kind of like talk and look like baby, like they sound like babies. And it's like old women sounding like babies and making like pouty faces and there's something kind of monstrous and so unnatural about it that I just kept playing with it. And I mean, I still don't totally know what it is, <laughs> but it kind of t takes over at a certain point. Tell them what the playwright said about your lips. <clears throat> I don't even know what it means. He said, he, he said they're political. <laughs> <laughs> That is good. <laughs> Leave it. The Germans have such a way with uh, <laughs> phrase I'm going to have to unpack that for like 10 years. Yeah, that could be its own co show, that phrase. Yeah. Um, and Alfredo, I'm curious, you know, as the sort of the engine of, of this thing, how did, how, do you, how did you find that character of Letter? How does that character operate amongst, you know, this sort of whirling? Well, I mean, I guess he's sort of the has to be sort of the everyman. Um, it's a satire, so we're, we're, you know, we're satirizing our current social situations. And so he, I think he does have to sort of be a bit of an everyman. So we, I tried to play him as straight as possible, and, and then that just makes everything around me seem more chaotic and what have you. Um, Andrew and I were speaking about, uh, I, I love, Dr. Scheffler is one of my favorites, and um, we were speaking about some of the details that Dr. Oh, yeah. Scheffler has. Maybe you can uh, talk to us a bit about some of those details. Scheffler's developed into it. He's got like an ignition sequence to get himself <laughs> going. He's got all kinds of ticks that sort of multiply, it seems, and uh, uh, it helps me to remember who the character is because unlike these guys who came into rehearsal very close to having it intact, in I spent two weeks figuring it out, throwing pasta on the wall and seeing what would stick. And eventually, Dr. Scheffler resulted, just it was the happiest uh, version of it. It just sort of filtered into that. And uh, the physical stuff really helps me every night to remember who the hell I am. <laughs> <laughs> um, any questions? I'll stop chatting if people have um, issues they want to talk about or? Issues. Issues, yeah. Polit issues. Political lips are on the back row. I love that. That's, that's amazing. I'm still thinking about it right now. Right? Um, <laughs> as far as, uh, I know every actor loves like a new set to, to be able to play around in and stuff, but did you guys feel, and generally, I mean, whoever's opinion, did you guys feel uh, a sense of, of tension or a confinement to this set that maybe added to the performance for you guys, or did you just generally feel like passionately open and like, this is a great play lab? side effects or 
is a sense of confinement, especially in the earlier scenes, because <clears throat> we haven't really like been able to sit on the stairs yet and like move around. And um, I, I hadn't really articulated it until I had a friend see the show, and she was like, "You're just so exposed." I was like, "What do you mean? Every you know every play, you can see the actors." And she's like, "No, but you're like looking down at them," and 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 I realized I was like. It is a different kind of scrutiny that this creates. And I mean, I, I can't say that I've thought about it too much because it probably wouldn't help me. <laughs> but um, energetically, you do feel, you do feel the, ener the energy in a different way, you know? Especially in the beginning. And then it can kind of open up. <clears throat> um, Dad and Matt, was that scrutiny something that was, came out of the design process? Did you? Were you conscious of that? Well, I think putting two banks of people against each other this way just creates, a, creates some kind of tension also for the audience, I think, yeah. Yeah. as I well mean, as for the actors. So. I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it was obvious to me, I think, once we started doing that, but it became more obvious to me, and not so much scrutiny of the actors, but the scrutiny of your audience members. Like, my friend Asher was sitting across, and I just, I just watched him to see if he was going to leave. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just sort of like, you can do that, which is like, when else do you get to do that? It's like, mm -hmm. who's falling asleep over there? <laughs> but what was, what was interesting is I, when I walked in, I forgot the title, and I was sitting over here, and I was with my friend Lisa, and I was looking over at everyone over here, and I said, there are a lot of beautifully interesting people here. Hmm. And I meant it. I mean, I really, this is a really interesting crowd. It was just, but I remember then once the, Play began, and although it was, it was very well lit, I felt that we were very exposed. In, 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 in one way, it actually felt quite good, and in the other way, it was a little odd. Um, and then, as I think the play progressed, I became uncomfortable with the thought that I was thinking that there were a lot of beautifully interesting people. <laughs> It's so true, because you're hideous, man. <laughs> <laughs> you are hideous. <laughs> um, I have a question for Stephen Boyer. Um, when you were, at the end, when they're like circling each other, and they're, and they're saying, like, so go is to me, mm -hmm. um, and you're, is that, are you Christian at that point? No, I am Carlman, what we've been referring to is Carlman II. Both my characters, actually all of the multiple characters, we have the same name. Both the Schefflers are called Scheffler, both the Fannies are called Fanny, both the Carlmans are Carlman. I was Carlman too, but Is it... The son? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, the son. But then it, it, at a certain point, kind of melts away. I mean, it gets really confusing <laughs> for me as well. I and, think the answer is yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's all those things. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah, I think, yeah, it is. It's all of those things. Okay, it's, yeah. I, when I'm, I'm referring to myself when I say me, and I'm referring to him, because we start to become this collective person, you know? Um, and, like, you know, this weird, like, self-love at the end. It's like you're, it's really, you know, just... Yeah, lo losing yourself in your own reflection. Which never happens in couples. No, never, never. <laughs> <laughs> or dogs in their own. I'm curious, what, what um, sort of research did any of the panelists do while you were working on this play? I didn't do any. If any. I didn't do any. <laughs> He tried to get. He tried to. You were at the beginning. You were sending people sent videos of plastic oh, surgeries, and I yeah. would watch like was, five seconds and then stop. Yeah, I mean, there was there was one video that I showed everyone where a, a man actually had to have his face medically removed, so he just had a hole in his face. 
and like people were so scared of him and it was and, and, and then I just sort of thought that just that whole feeling and I was curious about that but uh, then I stopped <laughs> and he was like I watched 30 seconds and I shut it off I'm like okay I'm done I got my Dan Flavin books out uh-huh. and he was really uh-huh. he, he, he does that's pretty much what he does you know who he is that's all I know so it's, it's written for four actors broken down in swag mm-hmm. that, was, that was my question yep <laughs> Although I was talking to the playwright, he said he has had productions where they've double, like, where they've said, "Well, we're going to put, you know, we're going to do it with I don't know, eight, nine people." And huh. I'm saying, "You can't do that." Right. Mm. But they, but it has happened. That kind of goes against the whole. Yeah. Point. No, it's yeah. like, pl- yeah. He he told us of the the Cuban production in Havana that he went to see that was um, weighed down because every time they switched, they had a different put on a different costume, um, and on top of which they, they made the play only about the evils of capitalism. Uh. So, uh, <laughs> that's weird. But there was great music in it. Great music. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. I mean, I'm curious, actors, um, those switches, sometimes they occur like within a line. You know, a line yeah. is divided into, yeah. it goes from one to the other. How do you... I guess, how do you prepare to do that? Or are there, are there sort of particular technical things that you need to keep in mind? Or what's the feeling? That's better. Oh, fuck, oh, fuck. <laughs> it's a little bit like, oh, it's going to change now. Don't okay. it too Yeah, now. and then it's just <laughs> like, yeah, it's like, remember, it changes now. <laughs> but is that, is that what, does that go through your mind? Well, yeah, I mean, it's, and then it just becomes like choreography yeah. in a way. And it's just suddenly like, and now it's like, it's like a beat shift, but a really extreme one. And then you're just a different person. <laughs> I mean, we've done this play so many times. Rehearsal is basically doing the play. Mm-hmm. And we've had this space for so long, exactly as you see it. So we've, we've played in here many, many times. And so, I mean, for me, the play slow, began to slow down. And so those beat shifts uh, are, uh, don't feel as immediate and, and, and uh, uh, abrupt as they used to. Yeah, I'd like to ask you how you sort of Like what was going on for the character at that moment? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not, for Alfredo. Yeah, so not for Alfredo. Not for Alfredo. Not for Alfredo. What's going on for me? I mean, finally, you decide. Okay, you're not going to kill yourself. Okay, great. Uh, you're, you know, at the like you reflection of yourself. Well, I mean, I I have my own ideas about this, and <laughs> people will shrug. Well, but it, it is it, it is sort of to me in some ways. Um, so, sort of the play is sort of about celebrity in some ways to me and how people go through this thing and then people start treating them like they're a god and they lose themselves and then they start to abandon all the people that actually cared about them and then they go through this craziness and then on, in the 14th minute of their fame it all starts to crumble apart and then they start to lose themselves they, they have a breakdown and then finally at the end they find themselves Again, which is the only, uh, you know, consolation that you have, is that you're still there. Right. And I feel, for me, that's sort of what happens. We go through this guy's 15 minutes of fame, and then he ends up finding himself again, at least. He may not have his wife anymore. He may not have this or that, but he's found himself, hopefully, and that's, that leaves us with hope. Yeah. I mean, I see a person not <clears throat> so much as their face, but what's inside them, so you can have a thousand people mm-hmm. looking the same, but it's what it's who they are inside who is the real person. Yep. yep. And that exists, that stays. Face can change, and it does change as you age or whatever, but it's who you are. That yeah, they, the authentic self that is always yeah. there, the kernel of who you so are. So then you've lost that, and then you've got to cut it back. And you got to find it again. Is 
is that just you are happy to have found yourself or is that That's how I'm playing else? it. I'm yeah. playing it that I'm so thrilled yeah. to have found the the person that I was, the good person that I am again. Now how did he help you find it? Um That's fine. Just by being him. He's so cute. And yeah. he's, he's, he's adorable. He's cuddly. Um, you know, but no, I mean, honestly, I think that it's just, it's just the, the nature of a... I think Carmen, too, is actually a very good person. Yeah. And I think that that sort of comes through. After this plays over, we buy a house. <laughs> we, move, we move to Nyack. To Nyack, yes, exactly. <laughs> very nice. Live next to Alec Baldwin. It's great. You, you have it all mapped out. It's I do. Carefully beautiful. <laughs> yes. I guess that was uh, your description was really surprising to me um, in your experience of it, just because um, when you were looking at each other, I felt like so much of what you were talking about was the physical. I I didn't catch anything that was like, oh, I see my soul. It seemed like you were just fallen in love. I do, I do. I mean, you know, whatever anyone gets from sure. it is, is fantastic, you know, like however it speaks to you is great. But for me, that's, that's what it says for me. And I think it's very hopeful, yeah. yeah. And, and if, if you get that from it, then that's also great too. <laughs> um, I have a question for you, Daniel. I, I love how the Carmen and Alec are Why don't you should all? <laughs> we still have the curtains in the back. Let's do it. Let's do we it. Could all, we could do, we could do it for we now. Did. Yeah, now we spent, uh, I don't know, somewhere, somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 to 20 hours trying to make a very different idea of the surgery work, which was much more elaborate and involved two screens coming on uh, and uh, power tools that worked right. and jello and bl spaghetti. blood squirting and spaghetti and... That you could see mo most of which you could only see through these semi-opaque screens. Right. And we worked on it for a long time. And it, it was, was great. It was <laughs> it was regularly almost great. Exactly. <laughs> um, but I, I never I, I didn't uh, um, and it just kept being re regularly almost. And so um, we th we tried something else, and that's what we and I'm much happier with what we tried, which actually I think is much. It, it felt like I was working very hard suddenly in a play that I just wanted to like find a way of staging it that submitted to what it was. Suddenly we were doing all this work and uh, that didn't feel right. And some of the work was trying to figure out what the vestibulum aura sounds like as it pops into a Right, like all the sounds that you heard um, were, 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 were generated live, most uh, in, in all, m m yeah, all of them in the, in the previous incarnation. And so then, but what we've ended up with, I think, is much more, I think, a more emotional um, witnessing him. I mean, it has the humor and the play in it, but also we witness him bandaging himself. And um, I think I find that more powerful. Yeah. It, was, it was actually very, it was just counter to every, almost everything we did before it and everything we did after it, which is, and we would get to the spot and, uh, you know, we worked more intensely on something and I work, you know, you work on very complicated things. It just, it just sort of is antithetical to everything we were doing before. But I was, I was, I was willing to embrace and, that. I was willing yeah. to say, it's a play within a play. That's okay. Uh, but then it wasn't okay. But then we tried it without. And like a lot of things with this, I mean, it's not that long. So you can just try, try it one way one day and another way the next day and find which one you like. So it's kind of satisfying. You know, this is a play by a German writer. It's a European play. Um, and we're co-producing it with a play company who, who specializes in um, international theater. I'm wondering, uh, panelists, d does it feel different as, you know, American artists to be performing this European play? Or do you find that this sort of play is being made here also? Did you think that it felt? I don't know what different? this sort of play is, uh, really. It's so unique. <clears throat> it's just a, 
I don't know. There, that's a killer. I killed that off. <laughs> well, no, but it, but it is. It is extremely unique. <laughs> 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 we'll, we'll back up. But, um, anything else? <laughs> I mean, audiences say that. The audiences respond. Oh, yeah? That. Audiences say that this is unlike anything. They don't see theater like this. Oh. So, I, I mean, it's easier for them to judge it, I guess, than we yeah. are. No, I mean, that's good to hear. That's why it's exciting to do it, because it's, yeah. it's different, and it's, it's totally theatrical, and I, it's exciting as an actor in a theater to do something really theatrical. Yeah. You right. know, mm -hmm. where it's, it doesn't want to be anything but a play. And it's, yes. that's really fun about it and somehow unique. And lots of people have said this can only be theater. Actually, we talked about that early in the rehearsal, but it can't be film, it can't be TV, yeah. it's not an audio book. It's, it's, yeah. yeah. It's not an audio book? <laughs> <laughs> not yet. Yeah. Yeah. Chapter one. It, <coughs> Has he read the, uh, the, the mission? <laughs> uh, of, of, of the theater? It's part of our mission. <laughs> Oh yeah. <laughs> I have a last question about the uh, the talk about uh, whatever it is you guys create this little modular conducted transistor. <laughs> yeah. What, I know conductor. it's like the chat is metaphorical at points, but <laughs> that's fine. Yeah. How, what what is what it? What is it? What do you guys visualize? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You built one, right? You, no, no, you build there, one. No, some uh, coming uh, around Alfredo's. here that you can kind of see. I mean, <laughs> the, the, the thing you, the, the a version of it. Oh, well, Back yeah, I, I, I drew it all out. and yeah. It's, yeah. it's a big industrial oh, oh. electrical plug. He, he like drew it. Where is it? I have no idea. It's like... <laughs> is that what you tried to get the I drawing? Did, I, like, I copied all the you schematics know, like out. The future, the compass and everything. Yeah, yeah, there is a drawing. When Doc Brown is like on the clock light tower light. and he's like <laughs> connecting those things, yes. those like giant It's the flux plugs. capacitor. That's it's what like it is. that. It's like that. That drawing is now in the Lincoln Center. It's an enormous electrical plug. Where is that? There was a picture. There was a picture in one of the uh, uh, press releases, something like email, something. There was. A, I saw this picture of like this strange, like tran the inside of like a transformer. Not. It's just a toaster. It's a yeah. toaster. <laughs> it's a toaster. It's a giant industrial plug. I keep thinking those transformers that have a lever. Yeah. <laughs> um. On that, on that kitchen note, uh, thank you very, very much, everyone, and thank you. Thank you. Insanity. I just wanted to. Uh, <laughs> I just want to say insanity. I just want to say.